Welcome back to Valencia. I'm Nick Harris sitting alongside me, Matt Burt, down in pit lane, Dylan Gray. It's the final showdown. The final front row, Lorenzo Marquez, Pedrosa, row two, Alessio Spargo, Cal Crutchlow. Technical problems mean he'll have to start from the back of the grid. Bradley Smith in sixth place. Third row of the grid coming up. It's Andrea Iannone, the top Ducati, Paula Spargo and Andrea De Vizioso. Fourth row, Danilo Petrucci, Maverick Vinales, double winner here. Michele Pirro, also a winner here in Moto2. Row five, Bradle, Barbara and Loris Baz. Row six, Nicky Hayden on his farewell appearance in MotoGP. Ahead of Yoni Hernandez and Alvaro Bautista. Scott Redding, Jack Miller won the Moto3 race here last year. And Mike DiMeglio, row eight, Amp West, Eugene Lafferty and Tony Elias. And what about this last row, Matt? Brock Parks. And yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. It's Valentino Rossi in 26th place. Although we saw Rossi getting instructions from the officials that Cal Crutchlow will be starting next to him. Here is the front row. All the talking, everything that has been said, discussed, argued about, now disappears. And here is poor old Cal Crutchlow having to start from that back row after a mechanical problem with the LCR Honda. The final warm-up lap of the season. The final showdown of this extraordinary 2015 MotoGP World Championship. Who will be champion? Valentino Rossi or Jorge Lorenzo? It's a cauldron atmosphere here at the Ricardo Tormo circuit in Valencia. Jorge Lorenzo or Valentino Rossi, 30 laps away from being crowned the 2015 MotoGP World Champion. It's all on the line, all to play for in the next 43 minutes or so. Lorenzo versus Rossi. Final word with you, Dylan. Conditions look perfect. No, absolutely amazing conditions. You would not believe the atmosphere down here, the atmosphere from the crowds. I think it has to be one of the best races ever. No, it's great conditions to go racing in. Quick word on Crutchlow, it was an engine problem. That, that's the reason he has to start from the back of the grid on his number two machine. 110,130 lucky people to be here in the Mediterranean sunshine in Valencia. 600 journalists from all over the world. This is the sporting event worldwide this weekend. Let's have a look at those championship standings. Seven points. Valentino Rossi leads Jorge Lorenzo in the World Championship. Tension builds inside the factory Yamaha garage. Can Jorge Lorenzo become only the third rider in MotoGP history to overturn a points deficit coming in to the final round of the championship? We're about to find out here in Valencia. Valentino Rossi takes his place on that back row of the grid. Jorge Lorenzo is already there in pole position. 30 laps, 4.005 kilometres, 2.489 miles. The talking has stopped. The championship will now be decided out on the track. And it's a dream start by Jorge Lorenzo from pole position. Look at Valentino Rossi streaming up the inside down into the first corner. It's going to be 99 Lorenzo though that leads the way from Danny Pedrosa who's come through from the second row of the grid. There's Rossi trying to find his way back through the field. He's already up the inside of a few riders. Rossi now up the inside of Loris Baz at turn number two. Lorenzo though leads the way. Rossi sliding his way through the field. Wow, it's coming through there like a knife through butter at the moment. Pedrosa up the inside of Mark Marquez. Lorenzo, though, has got the dream, dream start. Valentino Ross, he's already picked up 10 places on the opening lap. He's up to 16th place, but his biggest fear is that Jorge Lorenzo's going to start cruising away at the front. Next in line for Valentino Rossi is number 68, Yoni Hernandez on that Claret Ducati. Mark Marquez now leading the charge on Lorenzo. Yandre Yannone's up in the fourth place. The two Ducatis got a good start because Davizioso's up into fifth place from ninth on the grid. Into turn 10 they come, the first of these two right-handers. There is a Valentino Rossi. 
right behind, right in front of him is Yoni Hernandez. Safely through they come. Turn 12, 13 coming up. Lorenzo got the dream start after that fantastic qualifying lap. 99 leads the way. 99 leads the World Championship at the moment by 17 points. Take no notice of that. That is going to change. One lap gone. Rossi needs help from the Hondas, no doubt about that. Lorenzo leads over the line at the end of the first lap. Valentino Rossi then down in 15th place. He's about to move up the inside of Nicky Hayden, the 2006 world champion. Hayden will run out a little bit wide. Rossi can't find a way through on that powerful prong at Ducati. Rossi will finally make it stick up the inside of Hayden down into the middle and court. This is where the championship was decided between the two of those back in 2006. Whoa, it's Pretty hectic there for Valentino Rossi trying to carve his way back through the field. There he is, 46. He lost the championship here nine years ago to Nicky Hayden at the front. Lorenzo not able to get away from Marquez. I'm sure both the Hondas know they mustn't let him escape at the front. Rossi having real difficulty finding a way through on number 68, Yoni Hernandez. No way through there as they run down on the brakes. There is no Rossi brilliantly late on the brakes. He's finally past the South American. The crowd go wild here in Valencia. All 110,000 of them there cheering on their hero. Rossi then now up into 14th place. Whoa. And he's up the inside of Bautista as well. Super aggressive from Rossi. He's on the charge. Rossi on the charge up the inside of Alvaro Bautista. There is Rossi. I think that's Stefan Bradl in front of him. It is Stefan Bradl in front of him. Championship gap now 14 points. If Lorenzo wins this race, then second place is only good enough for Valentino Rossi to win this World Championship. Lap 2 of 30 has been completed, and Lorenzo set the fastest lap at 131, 416. Rossi in the slipstream of Stefan Bradl as Aprilia. Rossi picks up one more place down into the brakes at the first corner. Valentino Rossi now up into 11th place. He's on the fringe of the top 10. Next in sight is Michele Pirro. He is a man on a mission. He is in the zone. Lorenzo still leaves at the front. Fastest lap of the race to Hoy Lorenzo. 131, 416. We were worried this might be a damp squib after all the excitement. This is even better than we thought it was going to be. Can Lorenzo get away? That's got to be the big question in terms of the outcome of this World Championship because Valentino Rossi down in 11th place but he's over five seconds back of the this is where he picked off Hernandez on the last lap he's up the inside of another Ducati on this lap he dispenses with Michele Pirro at turn number eight this is where Rossi went down in qualifying yesterday Rossi then inside the top 10 for the first time now it's 12 points between him and Jorge Lorenzo Lorenzo still leads the way at the front the two Hondas oh, you know, he's down. Oh, you, Andre you know this crashed out and that means that's another place for Valentino Rossi. Yanoni has crashed out of the race. You know now he, it's 12. Yanoni down at turn number 12. He gambled to run that asymmetric front tyre. We were worried about it overheating on the right-hand side. Was that the issue for the factory Ducati man? Jorge Lorenzo has put in another fastest lap of this race. A 131.367. He's almost half a second clear now of Mar Marquez. Rossi then up to ninth place. He's next in sights is Bradley Smith but he's 1.3 seconds behind the Tech 3 Yamaha man. He's in the groove now is Jorge Lorenzo. This is the sort of stuff we saw from him in qualifying yesterday through turns four and five. Marquez behind him. That is a new circuit record. 131.367 for Jorge Lorenzo. Up to the Angel Diego corner. Named after the 13 times world champion. 11 points now between Lorenzo and Rossi but still 26 and a half laps to go. Rossi's taken three tenths of a second in the first two splits out of Bradley Smith. In fact, he's now taken half a second out of Smith in those first two sectors. So Rossi chasing down Smith for eighth place. The gap now under eight tenths of a second. Here is Lorenzo heading for the 2015 MotoGP World Championship as it stands. That live championship standings on the right-hand side of your screen. Here is Rossi. And he's coming right up now on this battle involving Paul Espargaro, Danilo Petrucci and Bradley Smith. This is for the top six.
This is where it would tell. He's coming up against now some pretty quick riders, but he's closed right up on them. There is the trio in front of him. We ride with Bradley Smith in his face is Valentino Rossi. Rossi started this lap 1.2 seconds behind Bradley Smith. He's smelling his exhaust pipes now. The gap now between Rossi and Smith is under two tenths of a second. Valentino Rossi has just put in his personal best lap of the race, a 138.820. It's three tenths of a second slower than Jorge Lorenzo. Mark Marquez desperately trying to put the pressure on Lorenzo. He just said his own personal best lap of the race, but Lorenzo still has the advantage by just over four tenths of a second. Back with Bradley Smith, who picks off Danilo Petrucci down at turn number four. Petrucci fights back at turn number five. We're on board with Rossi. Rossi can pick off three riders here, and soon he can pick off Smith and Petrucci. They will not be easy as they fight amongst themselves. 25 and a half laps ago, we ride with Bradley Smith. Smith is running in eighth place. Rossi is running ninth. Rossi desperate, desperate to get past him. On the brakes, closes up. Valentino Rossi, we switch now back to Bradley Smith. Through nine, this fast kink, and then they'll flick it left through turns number 10 and 11. Rossi had a look up the inside, thought about a look up the inside of Bradley Smith. Smith, though, sweeps it back to the apex. Smith has another look up the inside of Petrucci going through turn number 12. No way through there for the British rider. Valentino Rossi still not able to make a move on Smith and Petrucci. What this is doing, it's giving Paul Spargo a bit of breathing space in sixth place. What it's doing is also is a bit of breathing space for Jorge Lorenzo at the front. Rossi's got to get through quickly. He knew this would happen carved through the early numbers but now he's having problems here comes rossi up the inside of bradley smith but no he just cannot get through mark marquez for the second lap in a row has just put in his personal best of the race a 131 455 he's doing everything is the number 93 he'll lose the motor gp crown at the end of this race he knows that but he's doing his utmost to put pressure on Jorge Lorenzo. Danny Pedrosa desperately clinging on in third place. Rossi still no way through on Smith or Petrucci through five. Yeah, this is the first big stumbling block for Bra Valentino Rossi. We had to expect this. We couldn't expect him to just carve his way through the field. Here we go. There's Andrea De Vizioso, Alessio Spargo, Polo Spargo, Danilo Petrucci. And as Rossi got past Bradley Smith, listen to the crowd. You know he has. Yeah, Rossi's been brilliant on the brakes going down into that turn number eight. He picks off Smith. That's where he took Hernandez. That's where he took Michele Piro. The gap now 10 points between Lorenzo and Rossi. Are the Hondas, though, going to run into those front tyre issues? Is Marquez and Pedrosa's right-hand side of the tyre going to start overheating? We'll find out very, very shortly because the gap between Lorenzo and Marquez. Lorenzo's eked it out again to just over four and a half tenths of a second. Next on Valentino Rossi's shopping list, and he has to tick off, is his great mate Danilo Petrucci. Of course, finished second to Valentino Rossi in that rain-soaked British Grand Prix at Silverstone. They race down towards turn one. 24 laps to go. Another epic MotoGP battle in front of 110,000 people here in Valencia. Listen to the crowd. Rossi through on Petrucci, who runs it wide. Smith goes through as well. Yeah, it didn't look like he had to work too hard, did it, for that move on Danilo Petrucci. Petrucci had a good long look over his shoulder. Rossi then threw into seventh place. Paul Espargaro in six is about one second clear of this battle for seventh place. Petrucci ran so wide into the McDoo and corner at turn number two. Bradley Smith was able to sweep through as well. Lorenzo was two tenths of a second quicker on that lap number six. The advantage over Mark Marquez. It's over half a second for the first time in this race. It's down to nine points. An advantage for Jorge Lorenzo in the World Championship. There is Rossi pulling away from Bradley Smith. Next on the shopping list, Bradley Smith's teammate, Paula Spargano. And then his older brother, Alessio Spargano. And then the fun and games were really start. In the first three sectors of this lap number seven, Valentino Rossi has already picked up four tenths of a second on Paul Espargo on that Tech 3 Yamaha. Here is Lorenzo then over the line to start lap number eight. And the gap is almost up to seven tenths of a second. Lorenzo marginally quicker again on that last lap from Marquez. 
Here is Rossi. There's still a long, long way to go. There's still 23 laps to go. We're not even anywhere near third distance at the moment. Can he do it? That is the man in front of him. Next there, Paul Aspargaro, number 46. Well, Ross is wide oh, at turn Ross two. Oh, gone wide at turn two. That would have cost him a couple of tenths as he tried to hunt down Paul Aspargaro. It's bunching up in that battle of the four flags between De Vizioso, the Aspargaro brothers, and Rossi, who's moved that relatively easy away from, uh, from Bradley Smith. Six tenths of a second, the gap now. 22 and a half laps to go. Jorge Lorenzo leads Hawaii. Rossi is trying to fight his way back as we stand at the moment. Jorge Lorenzo is world champion. Jorge Lorenzo sitting pretty just where he wanted to be at the front of this race on lap number eight. His advantage over Mark Marquez, still just over six tenths of a second. Danny Pedrosa making little impression in third place. This is where we lost Andrea. You know, he had a fourth at turn number 12 earlier on in the race. What's the gap between Paul Espargaro and Valentino Rossi? Rossi charging again. The gap's come down to four tenths of a second. That's a fight for sixth and seventh place. Rossi, though, with Lorenzo leading over the line to start lap number nine. He's got to come through to second place. It looks like even beyond the capability abilities of the mercurial, uh, mercurial Italian. Here we are, there's De Vizioso, Alessia Spargo, Paula Spargo, and there is Valentino Rossi. Long way to go, 22 laps to go. What can the Hondas do at the front? Can they haul back on Oil Lorenzo? I think that is the absolute key. So I can't really see Rossi getting up with the Hondas, can you? Yeah, this was Rossi on the previous lap, just running in a fraction too hot on the brakes, in a little deep down at turn number two. But this is a real heavy four-rider scrap now for fourth place. It's being headed by the factory Ducati of Andrea Di Vizioso, but there's less than a second now covering Di Vizioso in fourth, down to Rossi in seventh place. We're on board with Rossi through the angle on the Eto corner. Now, this is where Rossi's been really strong on the brakes, down into turn number eight. He's not going to be close enough to strike on Paul Espargo on this lap. He can really do his chances a great deal of good. There's three in front. He's got to snaffle them up pretty quick. He's closing on Paul Espargo all of the time. Down through turn 11, little short straight than that. Left hand kick at turn 12. Where will he make his move? Here we go, turn 12 now. Up through 13, over the rise they will come. And Rossi closing on Paul Espargo all the time. Now, can he get a run down the start and finish straight? Down into turn one. Yeah, the factory Yamaha against the satellite Yamaha. This is where Rossi will be looking to dive up the inside of a Paul Espargo down into turn one is he going to be close enough no he'll definitely try and get close enough to line up a move on Espargo down at the second corner here we are then it's the Espargo brothers just ahead of Rossi is he close enough no he's not Paul Espargo really late on the brakes Rossi closes up we ride with Valentino Rossi, Lorenzo's advantage at the front, coming up to around seven tenths of a second. De Vizioso, Alessio Spargo, Paula Spargo and Valentino Rossi still running in seventh place. Can he get up into six? We ride with him. This is where he likes it. He's up the inside. Listen to the crowd. Valentino Rossi has passed. They touch. Him and Paul of Spargaro touch elbows, but Rossi has made his way through. Well, he had to be aggressive coming from the back of the grid. That's exactly what he has been, Valentino Rossi. He picks up one more place, and for the first time in this race, Rossi inside the top six. Here we go. This is that move at turn number six. Around Paul Espargaro out a little bit wide. Espargaro, you could see clearly Rossi was on the inside there. It was a hard move, but it, it was a fair move, no doubt about that. Cal Crutchlow, of course, who had to start this race from the back of the grid after those technical problems. He's just got himself up into the point scoring places. 15 for Crutchlow. Lorenzo over the line. Marquez, that gap has stayed pretty much constant now for the last two or three laps. Marquez, six tenths of a second behind Lorenzo. Danny Pedrosa, one and a half seconds behind Mark Marquez. Rossi then using that superior horsepower of the Yamaha down the start finish straight to close up on a later Spargo on the Suzuki. This is the battle for fifth place and more precious world championship points for the doctor. 20 laps to go. Eight points now separate Jorge Lorenzo and Valentino Rossi. 
next on the shopping list. Alicia Spargo on the Suzuki. Will it again be that Anhelieto corner or will he do it coming into turn eight? He's closing up for the kill, is Valentino Rossi. Yeah, not close enough at turn six, but what he's going to do, he's going to get in the draft of Aspargaro down to turn number eight. This has been his favourite overtaking spot in this race. Is he close enough? We know Alain Aspargaro is a real demon on the brakes. So we know that Suzuki's got phenomenal braking stability. It's one of the sweetest handling motorcycles on the grid and Rossi as yet has not been able to find a way through by on that GSX RI can't find a way through there at turn number 10 either through turn 11 he comes Rossi so so close to the Suzuki up to turn 12 here comes Rossi right leg out can't do it just there then they flick it left over 13 eight points between them as they come through 13 into 14 Rossi surely will make his move as they come out of here and drag down towards turn one Rossi's Yamaha should have the legs on the latest Spargo Suzuki, but Spargo got great drive coming out of that final corner. Can Rossi close up? Here he comes out of the slipstream. Rossi's got the inside line. He'll make that move up the inside of a latest Spargo. He runs it a little bit deep. Spargo takes fifth place back. Oh, still eight points between them when they cross the line. Marquez has pulled back another tenth of a second on Jorge Lorenzo at the front. There's De Vincioso, there is Alessio Spargo, and Valentino Rossi is through this time, and the crowd go wild, and this time he has made it stick, coming out of turn five, up towards six. Brilliant move by Rossi on the brakes, underneath the Suzuki of Alessio Spargo at turn number five. So Rossi then up inside that top five, He's got Andrea De Vizioso just ahead of him on track. Jorge Lorenzo is still leading this race. The gap's come down a fraction by uh, four tenths of a second now. Marquez is trying to close that gap back. He's picked off a couple of tenths on the last lap. Danny Pedrosa has upped his pace on the last lap, actually. Pedrosa just set a personal best lap of the race. He was four tenths of a second quicker than Lorenzo. Back with Rossi. Rossi closing up on the Ducati of Andre De Vizioso. What a battle these two had. The opening round of the championship in Qatar. Little did we realise where this championship would be going. Here comes Rossi. Not quite close enough. Get the drive out of here. Down the start for the straight they come. That Ducati has got a lot of grunt as you can see. Seven points separate Lorenzo and Rossi. 18 laps ago and the gap at the front nearly half a second between Lorenzo and Marquez. Andrea De Vizioso, one of the hardest men to pass in this MotoGP field. He's got the grunt of that Ducati coming out of turns far, turn six and turn number 14. He's a great late breaker, is Andrea De Vizioso. Not late enough though to hold off Valentino Rossi. The crowd go absolutely crazy in the background. Rossi then inside the top four. The gap down to seven points. That's the advantage that Rossi had coming into this race. It's now back down to five points. It's all about whether Mark Marquez or Danny Pedrosa can hunt down this man, Lorenzo, at the front of the race. This championship is far from over. We're not even at half distance now. OK, we've been featuring Valentino Rossi. Now we have to look at this battle. This could be crucial as the Hondas try to hunt down the Yamaha of Jorge Lorenzo. Five points between them. What a climax! to the MotoGP season. Who's going to be the world champion? Is it Lorenzo? Is it Rossi? Will my voice last the cause? Lorenzo over the line to start lap number 14. He leads it by just over four and a half tenths of a second from Mark Marquez. Danny Pedrosa still there in third place. Here comes Valentino Rossi now in fourth place. He's come from the back row of the grid up to fourth place Rossi. He's not going to finish on the podium unless there's something dramatic happens to Lorenzo Marquez or Pedrosa because Rossi over the line was 11.3 seconds behind Danny Pedrosa. The only thing that can happen for Valentino Rossi is to the two Hondas pass Jorge Lorenzo. I think that's the correct scenario, isn't yeah. it? Because second place will not be enough. Uh, sorry, if Lorenzo finishes second, he will be world champion. Yeah. This is the battle now. This is the battle now that's going to decide the champion. How many times have we said the last few months, Hondas are going to play a massive part in the outcome of this world championship? That is exactly what is happening.
This is as close as we've seen this gap between Lorenzo and Mar Marquez for some time. It's visibly closer and it is, we can see it's now down to just over three tenths of a second. Lorenzo is the master at riding under pressure. He's the master at leading these races from start to finish. He very, very rarely cracks under pressure, does Lorenzo. Will he be able to survive this pressure cooker atmosphere, this pressure being exerted by Mark Marquez? They're about to come and complete the 14th lap of this Valencian Grand Prix. It's Lorenzo just from Mark Marquez. I just want to get this right in my mind and for the viewers' mind. If Lorenzo finishes second and Rossi remains in fourth place, Lorenzo will be world champion. Is that correct? I want to make it absolutely doubly sure. Yeah. If Lorenzo finishes second, then Rossi needs to finish on the podium to yeah. become world champion. Because it's a big, big ass now for Valentino Rossi to catch those people in front, yeah, isn't it? Just what it'll mean is if Lorenzo, if Marcus passes Lorenzo, I think they'll finish on the same points. Oh, but Lorenzo actually has won more races. As the six, it will mean two, four. Yeah, six to four. Yeah, Marcus is not letting Lorenzo go away. And don't, we're not half distance yet. Don't get carried away. Don't rule out Danny Pedrosa. Then it would be a very, very different story. Yeah, if Lorenzo then finished down in third place, Rossi only needs to finish in the top six. Over to you, Mr. Honda. <laughs> On board with Danny Pedrosa. This will be his 100th Premier Class podium. He's well clear of Valentino Rossi in fourth place. Not enough, though, for the 36-year-old to wrap up that 10th world title. Although on his pit board, he is now being told Rossi P4. They are making him very, very aware of that situation. Wow. Thanks, Dylan. Take a big deep breath, everybody. When they cross the line this time, it's only half distance. Seems like we've been here for days, doesn't it? Yeah, this is going to be all about Jorge Lorenzo's concentration his focus as Mark Marquez that we just saw Marquez sweep through the first corner Marquez now is as close as we've seen him to Jorge Lorenzo there's Rossi over the line in what is now a safe fourth place he's quickly broken away from that chasing pack Rossi in two laps has taken 1.6 seconds out of Andrea De Vizioso. Here comes Mark Marquez now. He really is piling the pressure on Jorge Lorenzo. Watch this start earlier on from Valentino Rossi from the back row of the grid. Lorenzo got the dream start from the front row. Rossi got a brilliant launch off the line. He was obliterated away from Tony Elias from Brock Parks. He's already up the inside of Eugene Laverty. There's Jack Miller on the outside of the track. Scott Redding peeling around the outside as well. But Rossi had already picked up at least six, seven, eight places on that drag down to the first corner. And for the first time in this race, while we watch this start replay, the gap between Lorenzo and Marquez, it's just over two tenths of a second. Can the Hondas bring the world championship to Valentino Rossi? One Honda is not enough. Mark Marquez passes Jorge Lorenzo, he still will be world champion. I just cannot see Danny Pedrosa bridging that 1.8 second gap to Jorge Lorenzo, unless Lorenzo runs into some pretty major grip issues. Lorenzo going for a tear off down the start, finish straight. We're on board with Mark Marquez down this long run to this first corner, hard on the break, sweeping through to number one. The gap over the line was back up to just over three tenths of a second. If there's a man who can manage a race by looking at his pit board, it's Jorge Lorenzo. Make no doubt about that. 14 longest laps of Jorge Lorenzo's life. Look at that from Jorge Lorenzo. We talk Ooh. about his... Well, he's known as the Hammer because he's so consistent. And that's why he is called the Hammer. Mid to high 131 throughout this race. His best lap at 131.3, his slowest lap at 131.8. Only half a second deviation in the lap times from Jorge Lorenzo. That metronomic consistency that he's become so famous for, and he needs to have that weapon this afternoon because Mark Marquez is not letting him get away at the front like we've seen in the past. Marquez still hovering around about three tenths of a second behind Jorge Lorenzo. Will Mark Marquez come through to take what would be his sixth win of the season? Well, one, 
One thing just to mention, obviously, with Jorge Lorenzo's pit board, they're advising him where Rossi is very important, but also on Rossi's for motivation. It doesn't say any names in there, but right next to it, you have P4 and P1. So he also knows all the time <laughs> where Lorenzo is and also how far the gap is. Yeah, they're not telling him where Mar Marquez or Tani Pedrosa is, are they? What a shot. Turn 13. What a season. What a race. And Lorenzo still leads away. 13 laps ago. The gap now around four tenths of one second as they peel into turn one. Petrosa has already crossed the line. Rossi will cross the line any moment now. Valentino Rossi now just has to hope that the Hondas can catch the man. Paul Espargaro, Andrea De Vizioso to Paul Espargaro in front of De Vizioso. Bradley Smith behind Alasia Espargaro. Danilo Petrucci. Great ride by Cal Crutchlow. Now up into 10th place. Michele Piro in 11th. 12th is Johnny Hernandez. Maverick Vinal is 13th. Batista 14th. And Bradle 15th. That's where we are at in terms of the championship on this 18th lap of 30 here in Valencia. We're heading for a 12 point swing in favour of the man leading the race, Jorge Lorenzo. He came into this race trailing Valentino Rossi by seven points with Lorenzo in the lead and Rossi in fourth after a great fight you have to say from the back of the grid then that 12 point swing puts it five points in favour of Lorenzo you're absolutely right though if Marquez goes by they will be equal on points but Lorenzo will take the title because he has won more Grand Prix could it be closer than that through the final corner then to complete lap number 18 Still Lorenzo holding firm against this onslaught from Mark Marquez. Lorenzo over the line. The gap remains just over three tenths of a second. Danny Pedrosa looks like his race has run for the victory because Pedrosa now has dropped 2.6 seconds behind Jorge Lorenzo. Rossi needs both the Hondas to finish in front of Lorenzo. And Pedrosa, he's going to find it incredibly difficult. It's going to take a massive capitulation from Lorenzo to give up those 2.6 seconds to Pedrosa in third place. Let's be bluntly honest here. It's going to take a massive mistake by Jorge Lorenzo yeah. if he's not going to be crowned the 2015 MotoGP world champion. If Marquez gets past him, he will still be the world champion because he has won more Grand Prix than Valentino Rossi. That is the simple fact. And also bear in mind, remember what Marcus did in Phillip Island. He conserved that front tyre. They know they have overheating issues and actually did his fastest lap of the race on the final lap. So, you know, Marquez, I certainly think, would have something in reserve. As you say, Danny Pedrosa, he does sometimes struggle, but he'd normally be up to speed at this point. Yeah, I mean, he does come strong with, uh, at the end of the race, always Danny Pedrosa, but... No, that is a fair old okay. It's too big a gap, isn't it? It's a rather lonely ride now for Valentino Rossi. There's nothing more he can do. He's just got to hang in there and hope that his teammate, his championship contender, is going to make one massive, massive mistake. And you've got to say, Jorge Lorenzo is not known for making massive mistakes when he's leading races. Lorenzo stretched that advantage to just over four tenths of a second again on that lap 19. Danny Pedrosa, he lost another couple of tenths on that last lap. 2.8 seconds, he is now behind Lorenzo. Rossi over the line in a very lonely third place. He's 15 seconds, almost 16 seconds behind Lorenzo. He's streaked away from that chasing pack that was being led by Paul Espargo. Rossi 3.7 seconds clear. Spargro, Polo Spargo having a good ride in fifth place. That's still a really good scrap. Polo Spargo, Andre de Vincenzo, Bradley Smith, a late as Spargro. Great ride by Cal Crutchlow yeah, from brilliant. the back of the grid. Yeah. Fabulous ride by him. Cal Crutchlow has just put in his personal best lap of the race, a 132.449. Cal Crutchlow will definitely feel that if he could have started from that fifth place on the grid, he would have been probably ahead of Paul Espargo, Andrea Di Vizioso and Bradley Smith, or certainly scrapping it out with that trio for fifth place. We ride with Mark Marquez, the man in front of him is Jorge Lorenzo. Potentially, in great big letters, underlined 50 times, the 2015 world champion. Interestingly, on his board, they're now also showing him Danny Pedrosa's position, uh, quite important because he needs to know that should Marcus have anything extra and gets past him, that he doesn't need to risk anything and fight back because he had that, because he's got that extra margin. Absolutely spot on, Dylan. They're telling him that without any shadow of a doubt. 
that second place is good enough to be world champion. He wants to win the race, but he doesn't want to get involved in a cat fight with Mark Marquez in the last few laps. Yeah, the last thing you need with the world championship at stake is to get into a bit of a dog fight with Mark Marquez. Rossi's dropped down into the 132 twos now. Another thing about Lorenzo, he won't slow his pace in no. any way at all. He no. can run these laps all day long. The emphasis is on Marquez to increase his pace because Lorenzo will run these till next Thursday morning if he has to. And the best way to wrap up a world championship is to do it by winning the race. No doubt about that, Lorenzo. Of course, he did win the race here two years ago when he had a slim chance of overturning a 13-point deficit against the man we're on board with now, Mark Marquez. He won the race that day, but still lost the championship. We're facing, if Mark Marquez passes Jorge Lorenzo in the final 10 laps of this race, we're going to face the remarkable situation because it will mean that Rossi and Lorenzo will finish on the same points. Lorenzo will be the world champion, but what it will mean is Rossi will have lost the world championship having never lost the outright points lead. Nobody would have ever been ahead <laughs> of Rossi, would they, in the points? What an amazing statistic. You yeah, know. that's right. He, he, has, he has been behind Lorenzo before They were in equal the at the Silverstone, weren't they? Yeah. They're equally on points at Silverstone. We ride with Mark Marquez, nine laps to go. The outcome of the 2015 World Championship is in favor of the 28-year-old Spaniard, Jorge Lorenzo. First time in the race, Nick, on that last lap, Lorenzo has just dropped in to the 132s. It was a 132.035. He's still leading by just over three tenths from Mark Marquez. Here is Rossi up through turn number two. Paul Espargaro is leading the train behind <laughs> Rossi. Marquez is close now, Matt. Yep. He is really, really close. He was two tenths quicker. Yeah, we ride with Lorenzo. There is Marquez behind him. I have to keep telling you, even if he finishes second, Lorenzo, he will be the world champion only because he's won more Grand Prix. And Mark Marquez, he's got his own personal goal in this race, I'm sure. You know, he's out there to win this race for Honda. He's out there to win the race for himself but after all the accusations about him favoring Jorge Lorenzo he'll want to win the race and probably bury that one as well eight and a half laps to go tension at boiling point here in Valencia Lorenzo's led the race from start to finish the Hondas have harried him Petrosa's now dropped back to a very safe and secure third place it's all about Marquez and Lorenzo and Lorenzo knows his board has told him he'll know as well Second place is enough for him to take the world championship. But he will ride this pace all day long. He will not drop the pace because of that. Eight laps to go here in Valencia. Danny Pedrosa was just the quicker of the top three on that last lap by a tenth of a second. Nothing to give Marquez or Lorenzo any big headaches in these final eight laps. The gap still two and a half seconds between Lorenzo and Danny Pedrosa. Hollis Bargo is doing a great job of holding off Andrea De Vizioso and Bradley Smith in that battle for fifth place. That would equal the Spaniards' best result of the season. Marquez, you can almost reach out and touch Lorenzo's back wheel now, couldn't he, Marquez? Oh, please, 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 please don't <laughs> say that. <laughs> seven and a half laps to go, a bit less than seven and a half laps to go. Here is Lorenzo, here is Marquez into turns 10 and 11 slowest part of this a ricardo tormo circuit dylan how is it in pit line it must be quiet yeah <laughs> I, I can no, imagine that no, yeah honestly, I've no, I, I don't think i've ever seen this many people just sat there frozen just watching the screen not saying a single thing uh, i think that's what this race is doing for us i think this is what this championship has done for us into 14 they come Mark Marcus's board tells him 2.1 seconds up on Danny Pedrosa. He's only got one thing in his mind, is trying to beat Jorge Lorenzo. Lorenzo crosses the line, three tenths of a second advantage. Seven laps ago, Pedrosa's over the line. We still wait for Valentino Rossi to arrive. This is a lonely old sad ride at the moment after a brilliant 
race by Valentino Rossi. Yeah, Danny Pedrosa on that lap number 23 yet again was the quicker of the top three. Now, was Danny Pedrosa just having to back off a little bit in the early stages of the race with those overheating front tyres? As the front grip come back to Danny Pedrosa, is he about to mount a late charge as Mark Marquez swarms again all over the rear tyre of Jorge Lorenzo? It's Jorge Lorenzo himself. Uh, he's led this race right from the start as maybe Lorenzo pushed it a little bit too much. Is he going to come under real pressure from the two Repsol Hondas? Well, the man we've got to keep an eye on, isn't it? There's only one man now, and that is Danny Pedrosa. Yeah. Can he? Can he close the gap? Just to remind you, if the two Hondas had finished in front of Lorenzo, Valentino Rossi would be the world champion. It's a mighty, Coming mighty down. big ask for is Danny this Pedrosa. Gap, Danny Pedrosa is the man on the charge. Danny Pedrosa through the third split now he's within 1.7 seconds of Jorge Lorenzo he's picked up eight tenths of a second in the last lap and a half as Danny Pedrosa we've talked all weekend is there one final dramatic twist in this 2015 world championship is it all about to unfold in front of our eyes six laps to go here in Valencia wow down the start and finish straight we ride with Lorenzo into turn one what about Danny Pedrosa Danny Pedrosa just did a 1.31.5 he was four tenths of a second quicker than Mark Marquez he was three tenths of a second quicker than Jorge Lorenzo he's now within 1.6 seconds of Mark Marquez Pedrosa has got the time he's got six laps to go the one man who needs massive massive help he needs a huge favor from Mark Marquez and Danny Pedrosa it is this man Valentino Rossi because if the two Hondas move by Jorge Lorenzo in these final six laps then Rossi will be the world champion Marquez again closes up on Jorge Lorenzo has he been looking after those tires through turn seven through the kick now into turn eight is there a final twist? Is there a final part of this incredible book before the finish comes at the end of this race? Five and a half laps to go. Lorenzo still leads the way. This wouldn't be enough for him to be world champion. If he finished second, it would be enough for him to be world champion. If he finished third, Valentino Rossi would be the world title holder. Danny Pedrosa is now within one and a half seconds of this battle for the victory. Pedrosa just over 1.4 seconds back of Jorge Lorenzo and Marc Marquez. It's Lorenzo to come a complete lap number 25 in the lead. Five to go here in Valencia. What's that gap between Marquez and Pedrosa? It's 1.4 seconds. Pedrosa again the quicker of the top three. Oh. We thought it was all over. It's not all over. And Marquez has not made a move yet on Lorenzo. You can bet your bottom dollar he will. And, and how fierce will that move be? And what will happen, Nick, of course, is if Marquez passes Lorenzo, he might, he'll have to engage with Marquez because Danny yeah. Pedrosa's right behind him. A few laps ago, we thought, well, if Marquez comes through, he'll be able to just sit there in a fairly safe second place. With Danny Pedrosa closing hand over fist, then Jorge Lorenzo won't be able to relax for a second. Four and a half laps ago. What an extraordinary end to this 2015 MotoGP World Championship. 110,000 people are just watching with their mouths open. Is this title chase not over yet? Lorenzo is the world champ. And there you can see Danny Pedrosa. Obviously, you can see Mark Marquez. Valentino Rossi can just hope and pray that Honda remember those world championships he bought them before he switched to Yamaha. Through 13, lap number 26. Four to go for Jorge Lorenzo. He's on the cusp of winning a fifth Grand Prix World Championship. He's third in MotoGP. Here he comes over the line. The gap between Lorenzo and Marquez. He's under three tenths. The gap between Marquez and Pedrosa. It's come down yet again. 1.2 seconds is the gap. Lorenzo again just drops in to the 132s, as does Marquez. And Danny Pedrosa are 131.898. Must be five or six laps in a row now that Danny Pedrosa has been faster on track than Lorenzo and Marquez. Has he got enough time to claw back those one and a half seconds between himself and Jorge Lorenzo. Valentino Rossi certainly hopes so because it's world championship on the line for the Italian. Bradley Smith moves up into sixth place in front of Andre Davizioso but Marquez closes up. 
on Lorenzo. As that Surely says, not. if he passes him, he will still be world champion. But Pedrosa is the man with all the speed. Five points, Lorenzo leads the championship. They will be equal on points if Marcus gets by. He will win the title because he has more Grand Prix wins. But if Danny Pedrosa goes by, Rossi wins the title from fourth place. This oh. is unbelievable tension here in Valencia. They're through the third split. Danny Pedrosa, the gap now, 1.1 seconds. Lorenzo's getting the pit board. He knows now they're giving him a yeah, sign about Marquez go. and Pedrosa. Lorenzo, he's had the hammer down for 26 laps. He's got to get the hammer down again now because they know Danny Pedrosa is the man on the charge. Will he still play a huge part in the destiny of this world champion? There we go. Marquez and Pedrosa. 1.3 seconds. The gap between Marquez and Pedrosa now. It's under a second. 1.1 seconds between Lorenzo and Pedrosa. Three laps to go. Game on. The world championship at Stake. Lorenzo up at turn two, the Mick Doohan corner, the five times world champion. Boy, I bet he's watching and enjoying this one. The two Hondas now harrying the Yamaha in front of them. Lorenzo hanging on by his fingernails. We ride with Lorenzo. When will Marquez make a move? Is this the move he's going to make? Right in his face, number 93. And Pedroza, he's closing all the time. Two and a half laps to go. What an amazing race. What an amazing end to the season. How is your nerves, Jorge Lorenzo? Danny Pedrosa closes up through turn number eight. Two and a half laps to go of the World Championship in 2015 here in Valencia. It's going to be decided, as Nick said, right down to the wire. Danny Pedrosa is edging ever closer. This is now a three-way fight for the victory. What a second half to the race for Danny Pedrosa. You can hear a pin drop here in Valencia. There's 111,000 fans here. They are silent. Not a word is spoken, mouths are open, people just cannot believe this battle. Here they come once again, onto the back straight, onto the front straight. Lorenzo crosses the line, two laps to go, two to go. Marquez has not made a move yet, Pedroza is right up there with them. The World Championship will be decided in two laps of the Ricardo Tormo circuit here in Valencia. Danny Pedrosa was seven tenths of a second quicker than Lorenzo and Marquez on that last lap. He is right there. You wouldn't put it past Danny Pedrosa coming through to take a victory. It would be a sensational, a remarkable comeback from Danny Pedrosa. He was two and a half seconds behind this battle through turn number five. Pedrosa now hugging the rear tyre of Mar Marquez. Is Pedrosa going to make a move at turn number six? He's not quite close enough. This is amazing. This is motorsport at its very, very best. Danny Pedrosa has taken second place from Mark, Mark Marquez. That Mark Marquez tries to fight back. Lorenzo out a little bit wide. Marquez back up the inside of Danny Pedrosa. The two Repsol Honda men fighting. This is music to Lorenzo's ears while they're jotting it out. Lorenzo's away at the front. It is music to Jorge Lorenzo. Swapping paint, swapping positions. One and a half laps to go. Lorenzo is so, so close to that world title. The Hondas, well, of course, they're going to fight with each other. But can they get past Lorenzo? That may be just, just the break that Jorge Lorenzo needed. The biggest two and a half miles of Jorge Lorenzo's career coming up. The final lap of an incredible 2015 MotoGP World Championship is underway. Will it be Lorenzo? Will it be Rossi? It's all about Mar Marquez and Danny Pedrosa. If they can find a way clear of Lorenzo, Rossi will be the world champion. Lorenzo under incredible pressure. He's held off those two Hondas so far through turn number two. It's Lorenzo with one hand on the trophy. Rossi crosses the line in fourth place. He can play no part in this battle. Lorenzo has three quarters of a lap to go through four, through five, up now towards turn six. Marquez of Atrosa at his heels all the time through the Angel Nieto corner. Five points, he leads the championship. Powering out of turn number six through the kink at seven. Lorenzo's not going to come under attack from Mark Marquez. He's ridden a perfect final lap so far as the number 99 through this tight twisty infield section no way through here for Lorenzo Lorenzo's going to take the championship surely 
up through nine and ten for Jorge Lorenzo. Half a lap to go. One hand on that World Championship trophy. Now he dips it into turn 12. Two bends to go. Jorge Lorenzo standing on the brink of his third World Championship. Danny Pedrosa is out of this. Lorenzo is going to come through the final corner. It's Lorenzo's now to lose. Jorge Lorenzo will be crowned the 2015 MotoGP World Champion. 99 wins here in Valencia. 2015 belongs to Jorge Lorenzo. Joy and jubilation on one side of the factory Yamaha garage. It'll be contrasting emotions on the side of number 46. Valentino Rossi comes over the line. He put up a great fight, but Rossi is not the world champion. Rossi crosses the line. Second in the world championship. Jorge Lorenzo has ridden a most amazing race. He has ridden the race of a truly great world champion. Congratulations to Jorge Lorenzo. Enormous applause for Valentino Rossi. He actually could have done no, no more than what he did. Well, it started in dramatic fashion in Qatar with Valentino Rossi winning the opening round. It's finished with unbelievable nail-biting tension right down to the last lap. If Danny Pedrosa and Mark Marquez had passed Jorge Lorenzo at the end of that race, then Lorenzo was seeing the World Championship slip through his fingers. He produced a brilliant last lap with Jorge Lorenzo to win that World Championship. His seventh win of the season. And for the fifth time in his career, the third time in MotoGP, Jorge Lorenzo is the king of MotoGP. We thought wow. it might be a damp squib. Wow. wow, what a race. And those last few laps. Well, there you go. Regali, the man we've been talking to, talks to us every week. Just doesn't know what to think. I don't think Yamaha really know what to think. I know what the Hoy Lorenzo side of the garage think. A truly, truly worthy world champion. Forget the shenanigans. He's won more Grand Prix than anybody else. And that was the ride of a world champion. That also was a ride of a world championship. Brilliant, brilliant performance by Valentino Rossi. But he has lost his championship crown to this man. Five points was the difference at the end of a remarkable 2015 MotoGP World Championship. Jorge Lorenzo, he said yesterday that qualifying lap in pole for pole position was the lap of his life. That last lap to hold off Mark Marquez and Danny Pedrosa has just bettered that, no doubt about that. Brilliant stuff from Lorenzo. Second successive Grand Prix victory of the season. He's a serious, serious championship contender. Lorenzo is a masterclass. Fourth win in a row for the Spaniard. Victory number five of the season. Jorge Lorenzo though wins here. What a race. Yeah, almost speechless after that. Ah, uh, uh, mate, we, we knew this championship was going to go all the way. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's all Jorge Lorenzo. That's uh, friends of his dressed up in all of the uh, the leathers and helmets that he wore in his previous world championships, yeah, of course. That's, that's right. Two fifty ones as well there. Great idea. It's almost out of the Hoy, uh, almost out of the Valentino Rossi scrapbook, that, isn't it? Imagine if they... Uh, they put those letters on the last minute wouldn't they? because they didn't know he was yeah. going to win the world championship right down to the last lap. But you can see they are the five world titles for Jorge Lorenzo, his second, or two in 250s, his third in MotoGP's first since 2012. And for the first time in the whole of 2015, at the last race down to the last lap, Valentino Rossi lost the points lead in the World Championship right at the end. And it's only the third time in the 67-year history of Grand Prix racing that a rider who's been behind on points has come through to win the World Championship.
Commiserations to Valentino Rossi. He really could have done no more. Well, you're not going to see more contrasting emotions in the two sides of that factory Yamaha garage. Unadulterated joy on one side for Jorge Lorenzo. There's Danny Pedrosa. Let's not forget, amidst Ooh. all the World Championship celebrations, that was a magnificent 100th Premier Class podium finish by Danny Pedrosa. And all those Valentino Rossi, all those Valentino, millions of Valentino Rossi fans around the world suddenly would have become millions of Danny Pedrosa fans. <laughs> and Mark Marcus yeah. fans as well. Hector Barber there. Sporting a, a number one because he has won the open class championship, Barbara. He finished outside of the points in 16th, but with Loris Baz down in 19th. Barbara is the top open class rider in 2015. Listen to the reception for Valentino Rossi. He could have done no more. But he knows that that 10th World Championship has just eluded him after a great ride by this man, Jorge Lorenzo. That is just outside our commentary yes, box, yeah. which is now filled with tyre smoke. I think he's quite happy. Quite rightly, it was a brilliant ride by Jorge Lorenzo. The fourth time this year he's won in front of his home crowd in Spain. What a time to complete the quartet. He is the 2015 MotoGP World Champion, and that's what it means, because that race would have taken everything out of Jorge Lorenzo. Physically and mentally, he will now be drained. Emotional, we don't see a lot of emotion from Jorge Lorenzo, but... You have to say, he is a worthy world champion, no doubt about that. Uh, smiles from Valentino Rossi and a thumbs up. He could have done no more than what he did. It was a brilliant ride. Crowd will be supporting him. I really hope, though, they give Jorge Lorenzo the reception he deserves when he stands on that top step of the podium. He is drained. He has given that absolutely everything. There is nothing left in the locker for Jorge Lorenzo. Well, with two laps to go, with Mark Marquez and then Danny Pedrosa coming into the frame, he was only about five miles away from losing the World Championship because at that time it looked like Marquez and Pedrosa were the faster riders, but when he had to dig deep, when he had to call up on all those reserves of talent, Jorge Lorenzo delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've seen a better motorsport Ooh. season than we've seen, in these 18 rounds of the 2015 World Championship. Tell me what it was. This was a remarkable season and ended with a remarkable race. Yeah, my fingernails have gone again, that's for sure. Oh. There's Lorenzo's father coming to congratulate his son. All those years, those early years on pocket bikes in Spain learning how to master his skills with his father and that's what it was all about today it was all for this moment the moment Jorge Lorenzo produced probably one of the, the best races of his life he came under incredible pressure but when he was asked the questions he came up with all the answers what a season what a race and they're all back to work on Tuesday First test for 2016 starts here in Valencia on Tuesday. If he's got over the headache from tonight, yes, definitely. <laughs> Some party, I would imagine, tonight, and rightly so. Congratulations, Jorge Lorenzo, the 2015 MotoGP World Champion. The moment he knew that he was the title holder, 30 laps of pressure intensity and i think nobody unless they've been in that position could ever ever feel or understand commiserations from valentino rossi's 
army of supporters, as Nick said. He could not have done anything more. He was on the back foot. That grid penalty, dropping him to the back of the grid after all the controversy in Malaysia. He fought his way through to fourth place, but it just was not enough. He needed help from these two men. You have to say Mark Marquez and Danny Pedrosa. There's not a lot that, more that they could no, have done to I try and beat I don't think we won any nonsense about that. No, they gave no it way. absolutely everything, didn't well, they? You think five or six laps from the end, maybe a little bit more. Danny Pedrosa was two and a half seconds behind that battle for the victory. End of a difficult season for Mark Marquez, but he's ended in great style. And Danny Pedrosa, what an end to the season for him. A season that started in Qatar when we thought perhaps his World Championship career was over. Well, let's have a look a bit further down, shall we? Paul Spargo fifth, Bradley Smith sixth, Andrea De Vizioso seven, Cal Crutchlow, an absolutely brilliant ninth place behind Lacia Spargo, having to start from the back of the grid. Maverick Vinales 11, 12, Michele Pirro, 13, Yoni Hernandez, 14, Alvaro Batista, and Scott Redding in 15th place. Interview well, Danny, now. what a race that was. You were down by 2.6 seconds at one point, and all of a sudden you just came back. I mean, where did that come from? Did you think you could maybe get past Mark and Jorge? Yes, <laughs> I was. I was uh, not comfortable, especially on the beginning of the race, so I lose, I lose time and I was dropping a little bit. I tried to get closer at the middle of the race, but still I wasn't matching the, the, correct, the correct rhythm because I was suffering a lot with the front. But then uh, I, I decided to, to not to lose too much and try to stay saving a little bit the tyre and then towards the end, I knew uh, I had some extra, so I tried to push, and I was focused. I was enjoying a lot because I was recovering, and uh, actually I had a good time there in the last laps. I enjoyed, and, and well, I tried the pass, but I ran wide, and, and finally third, because in the last lap good was I made a mistake with the gear in one corner, so I, I couldn't really really stay stay close, but. Well, uh, happy, happy anyway, because today had some issues with the bike, but uh, now um, this is, uh, I finished for the overall the championship with all the, all the problems uh, I've, I've had this year, so it's quite impressive. Thank you very much, Danny. Congratulations. Well, I tell you what, I've seen Danny Pedrosa is happy with that for a long time. It was a great ride, great end to the season for Danny Pedrosa. Boy, Lorenzo celebrating with the team. What a team he's had around him, headed by the love for Cardo. You can see the man in the classes, the crew chief. And Max Biaggi there, of course, great friends of Jorge Lorenzo joining in the pre podium celebrations and embrace from the four times 250cc world champion. Max Biaggi saying thank you very much for beating Valet. <laughs> Lynn Jarvis offering his congratulations to Jorge Lorenzo. They're on the way home. Well, on the way home, I think they're on the way down the start finish line at the moment, aren't they? It's like an organised track invasion, as there should be. Here's Mark Marquez. Well, Mark, what a race that was. You were with Jorge pretty much all the time in those last laps. You were getting so, so close. Danny told us, though, a few problems with the front. He even caught up to you. I mean, you must have been at the limit. Yeah, in the beginning, Jorge pushed really strong. I was riding over the limit. Uh, and I think on that laps where Danny uh, just uh, cooled down a little bit the tires, uh, I was I was trying a lot in, 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 the last, in the last laps. I was preparing the attack for, for the last two laps, uh, for, for try to overtake and push the last, the last lap. But when Danny, when Danny overtake me, there we lose time. Uh, and then I try to catch Jorge. I try in the last corner to inside, but I saw that. Uh, was a lot of risk. Uh, I nearly lose the front, and, and then okay, second place is not the best way to finish the season. And you know, next season we will try to fight again for the title. Thank you very much, Mark. Congratulations. Yeah, Mark Marquez. He trailed Jorge Lorenzo, but he is the master of running at the front. I got to say, at one point I thought Marquez was going to get him. He did not. <laughs> He's found his feet now, isn't he, Jorge yeah. Lorenzo? <laughs> Yeah, he certainly has. Uh, i got to say, I think he's a very worthy world champion. Yeah. Uh, for everything of Valentino Rossi, what a performance by the 36-year-old. But Lorenzo is quick, and I think that whole race summed up Jorge Lorenzo.
Yeah, the two Repsol Honda men just talking about how they did everything they could to hunt down and pass Boyle Render. But here he is, the 2015 MotoGP World Champion, coming to talk to Dylan. Well, Jorge, you came into this weekend, you were down on points. What an occasion it was. In this race, you are now five times world champion. But in the end, also tell us about that pressure from the Hondas you had. It's easy to say, but you know, a lot of pressure. The rear tire was was destroyed. To be honest, I didn't see anything in the straight, in, in all the laps. I didn't see the board, I didn't see how many laps uh, was to finish. So I just tried to focus myself to go as fast as possible. Uh, sliding around and, and moving so much the bike, so I just keep my concentration and, and pray to, to finish the race. <laughs> you know, now I am five times world champion. It's easy to say, but now we make an unbelievable job. Yamaha make an unbelievable bike, and my team is, uh, is perfect this season. So I'm very, very proud uh, to have this season for, Spain, for uh, this world title for Spain. Thank you very much, Jorge. Congratulations. Congratulations to Jorge Lorenzo. He looks absolutely drained of emotion and of energy. And he said the rear tyre was sliding around all over the place. But that's a big streak in the blood, of course, because that burnout that he did, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, I don't think that was <laughs> caused by the <laughs> race. No, I, mean, no, I think that was when he was just uh, revving that engine to about 20,000 RPM to uh, celebrate winning his world championship. Well, the podium awaits. One must feel sorry for Valentino Rossi. But once again, it's the action on the track that has shone through yeah. after a very difficult two weeks for MotoGP. Yeah, there are a lot of fans that have gathered underneath the podium for the podium ceremony here. We hope they are respectful towards the new world champion. There is photographers fighting to get the picture. Say over 600 journalists here this weekend, a crowd of 110,000, nearly 111,000. And they were not let down in any way. Two new world champions, Danny Kent in Moto3, Jorge Lorenzo in MotoGP. We'll just run through a, a couple of stats and facts about Jorge Lorenzo. He's the first Spanish rider to win the Premier Class World title on three occasions. He's the second most successful Spanish rider of all time now after Angel Nieto. Incredible as well. He's the first rider in Premier Class history to win the World Championship, having not finished on the podium in the first three races. Of course, yeah, was, you forget, don't you? After it was a, such a difficult start to the year for him, wasn't it? Over Qatar with that helmet oh. trouble. Oh, Perez. Oh, sorry, uh, Argentina and Austin. And then he started coming into form, but he had to leave it to the last couple of laps of this final race of the season to clinch that world title. Podium awaits for the last time this season. What an amazing MotoGP season it has been. Boy Lorenzo, the world champion. Valentino Rossi in second place. Mark Marquez third. Danny Petrosa, Andrea Nodi, and Bradley Smith is your top six. Social media will be buzzing now after that unbelievable finale to the 2015 Mike GP World Champion. Jorge Lorenzo, of course, the new world champion. Let us know what you feel about that. Hashtag Lorenzo Champ on Facebook and Twitter. A warm embrace there from the former king of Spain to the new king of MotoGP. Podium awaits the new world champion. What a way to win the world title by winning an amazing final race. From start to finish, from start to finish, just does not tell the story in any way. What a ride by Valentino Rossi. Those early laps, he was scything through the field, wasn't he? It's like a hot knife through butter, but he knew once he got into fourth, that was it. And then it was down to the Hondas. And boy, did they try to beat Jorge Lorenzo. Just from Mark Marquez, what he said there. He, uh, overcooked his front tyre while trying to stay with Lorenzo. Danny Pedrosa, as he did in Japan somewhat in the rain, he just managed his tyres and then he came back to him. He was able to close the gap. Here he is, though. Danny Pedrosa, for the 100th time, steps on the Premier Class podium. Second place for his teammate Mark Marquez. And here is the 2015 world champion, it's Jorge Lorenzo.
Bit of a mixed reception there for Mark Marcus, I felt, did you? Yeah, a little bit for Jorge Lorenzo as well. What a year it has been for Yamaha, their 60th anniversary. They won the Constructors title, they've won the team title, and now Jorge Lorenzo has brought them the Riders' Championship. Triple crown for Yamaha for the first time since 2010. Place trophy going to Danny Pedrosa for, as we said, the 100th time in his Moto GP career. The second rider to reach that milestone behind Valentino Rossi is 141st podium of his Grand Prix career. Mark Marquez stuck with Lorenzo out throughout the race, but he has to hand over that World Championship trophy to his fellow Spaniards. Second place for Mark Marquez, third in the World Championship. But he's won the race, his seventh Grand Prix victory of the season. He is the 2015 MotoGP World Champion. Congratulations to Jorge Lorenzo. 40th MotoGP victory of Jorge Lorenzo's career. 61st in total, and that's what it means to the 28-year-old from Palma de Mallorca, new world champion. him yesterday was there any tears after that qualifying lap he said no but there'll be plenty of tears tomorrow if he wins the world championship but i think there was wasn't there inside the helmet before he even got back to the start really there's a happier and more relieved man than more hell around on the planet right now i'd like to meet him because what a feeling it must be to win a world championship a motor gp world championship in such dramatic fashion at the final round of the championship he came into this race trailing Valentino Rossi by seven points as Nick said only Wayne Rainey and Nicky Hayden at the overturn points deficits in the past make that number three though for Paul Hayden I think he's going to give this uh, uh, I think he's going to give oh, he's just, I think he's going to celebrate with the team isn't he he's made it quite clear where he's going they said no please don't do that <laughs> I don't think he's run off the podium to be difficult. I think he wants to get. He was asking that for the champagne, wasn't he, to be given to the team or perhaps to his mum and dad. I don't know who it was, but that, that was the reason. What a year it's been for Yamaha in their 60th anniversary. We knew that they won the Team World Championship. We knew they won the Constructor World Championship. It was all about individual honours today. Ah, great here. Danny Petrosa receiving some real well-deserved applause and chanting. When you look at Danny Petrosa's form in the last four or five races. I don't know if he scored more points out than Petrosa since uh, he's returned to full fitness. Salute the master. Salute the doctor. Salute. Valentino Rossi. Grand Prix victory number five of the season for Jorge Lorenzo. Oh, Marcus!
GP 2015, it just does not get any better than that. I hope you've enjoyed the season as much as we have. We've enjoyed you being with us. We've loved every moment of those 18 races. A massive thank you to Matt Burt sitting alongside me and Dylan Dyer Gray down in pit lane. A season none of us will ever forget. And Jorge Lorenzo, the 2015 MotoGP world champion. Right. We're taking a big deep breath. Matt's taking a big <laughs> deep breath here. Let's have a look at what the classifications will never, never tell us. They could never illustrate whatever these classifications say. What an amazing season we have had culminating here in another unbelievable race in Valencia. Yeah, it's been an absolute privilege to be part of such an unbelievable 2015 MotoGP World Championship. And quite rightly, it was decided right down to the very last lap. Hoy Lorenzo wins. Mark Marquez and Danny Pedrosa. Valentino Rossi would arrive from the back of the grid into fourth place. Paula Spargo. Bradley Smith in sixth place. Andrea De Vizioso, Alicia Spar, a great ride by Cal Crutzlow from the back row. 
Paolo Petrucci completed that top ten. Vinales, Piero, Hernandez, Bautista and Scott Redding on his final Honda appearance. They were your point scoring finishes. Hector Barbara in 16th place, but he did secure the Open Class Championship by five points from Loris Baz. Baz, the Frenchman, ends his first season in MotoGP down in 19th place. Yeah, Nicky Hayden bows out of an amazing Grand Prix career in 17th place. All important championship positions. Five points separate the Yamaha pair of Jorge Lorenzo and Valentino Rossi. Danny Pedrosa's 100th podium secured him fourth place after Andre Iannone's early crash. Great top ten finish overall for Danilo Petrucci. The two Suzuki's of Alasia Spargo and Maverick Vinales in 11th and 12th places respectively. Hector Barbara. 15th in the overall World Championship standings, top open class rider by those five points clear of Loris Baz. There's Jack Miller in his maiden MotoGP season, Nicky Hayden in his last MotoGP season, Eugene Lafferty, Mike De Meglia, Roshi Oyama, Takahashi, and Tony Lee is coming in at the end of the season. And Alex D'Angelis, what a welcome sight seeing him as a spectator here this weekend. Well, it's a clean sweep for Yamaha. Constructors' Championship. Yamaha have won it from Honda. Ducati Suzuki, Aprilia, forward Yamaha and ART. 14th MotoGP Constructors' Championship for Yamaha. The Team Championship. Mobistar Yamaha MotoGP from Repsol Honda. Ducati, good season for Monster Yamaha Tech 3. Suzuki X-Star Octo Pramac Racing LCR Honda. Mark VDS, for a little bit further down, forward racing Aprilia in their first season, Aspar and Emotion Iota racing in 13th place. Open riders classifications, congratulations to Hector Barber, congratulations also to Loris Bass. What a maiden season in the MotoGP World Championship for the Frenchman and Jeff Frenchman. And Jack Miller and Nicky Hayden, Brad Lafferty, Demeglio Pirro and Tony Elias. So the end of a truly remarkable MotoGP season. So what a race to end the year. See you in 2016.